Looking at the mycelium under the scanning electron microscope for years, I began to realize that these look like externalized neurological networks. This mycelial network extends and it's exquisitely well designed. It's a mosaic of cells and I believe it is Earth's natural internet of interfacing mycelial networks upon one another over every landmass on this planet. The entire surface area is a membrane for the release of, uh, of enzymes and acids which break down plant material. Without fungi, all the plants w would quickly die because there would, there would be a lack of nutrients. It's the recycling of dead plant material back into the ecosystem that is made possible by the mushroom mycelium. The fungus grows through the soil, picking up nutrients and water and bringing them back to the plant and trading them for photosynthetic carbon. We were able to see that carbon transmits back and forth through this network, like messages transmitting through the internet. In this picture, these circles represent Douglas fir trees. And the bigger and darker the circle, the bigger and older the tree. And those small light circles in the middle, those are the seedlings growing in the understory. And these lines that are linking the circles, those are the interlinking mycorrhizal fungal highways. It's a symbiotic, mutualistic, reciprocal relationship. And most fascinating to me that this, these fungi could connect plants below ground. I've shown that precisely these unseen connections exist. Once I thought that fairies connected and protected the forest. And now with my science, I know I'm not, I wasn't that far off. The, the tree sends down its carbon. It goes through the root system and through into these fungi. And there's a, an interface between the root uh, cortical cells and the fungal cell that's wrapped itself around that cortical cell and that's where this exchange goes on. So meters away you can have a plant connected to another plant and they're just shuffling carbon and nitrogen back and forth according to who needs it. These plants are really not individuals in the sense that Darwin thought they were individuals competing for survival of the fittest. In fact, they're uh, interacting with each other, trying to help each other survive. Evolutionary biology, to its detriment, has ignored is the role of all forms of symbiotic relationships in nature. Cooperation is what nature seeks to consolidate and conserve, and it is the species which can make itself most user-friendly to its neighbor species, which actually survives. That's why, you know, there is hardly a tree which grows on this planet without a mycorrhizal relationship to a fungi. When something happens in the ecosystem, especially a, a catastrophe, it is the mycelial networks that sense this and then design responses for quickly capturing nutrients that are locked up in dead organic plant material. And the mushroom mycelium is the natural neural net that is sentient. I believe that mushroom mycelium has a consciousness. I was very thankful when a group of Japanese researchers proved what they called cellular intelligence, and that putting a slime mold into a maze, the slime mold chews the shortest distance possible, navigating through the maze directly to the food sources. I was playing in the forest below and the places that are seen and unseen, in the trees and the logs and the forest floor. And I believed that fairies lived there. And their job was to live in and protect the forest, just like my job. But the fairies couldn't save that forest. And neither could I. Actually, nobody could. And you know, well, it's because we considered them competitors, interfering with our profits. But it took me a long time to realize that the cutting was not going to stop. Nor the attitude that we could convert these old growth forests into nice, marketable, neat plantations. I know that once we understand that we are deeply part of nature, really part of nature, not separate. That we aren't separate from this planet, we are, we are of this planet. We are a community, an ecology of consciousness that we can become part of the great strengthening, that positive trajectory. And once we do that, we can change the arc of the future.
The fact that we lack the language skills to communicate with nature does not impugn the concept that nature is intelligent. It speaks to our inadequacy of our skill set for communication. We have now learned that there are these languages that are occurring and communication between each organism. If we don't get our act together and come in commonality and understanding with the organisms that sustain us today, not only will we destroy those organisms, but we will destroy ourselves.